So let's write our first LCD program. We start by opening our Cal U vision. Mine is down here. Mine is already opened. I have the Cal U vision version 5.4, which was the latest version at the time of recording this video. So we come here and I'll enlarge mine like this and we create a new project. We can do that by just coming here, new U vision project. Um, yeah, this from a previous project. So you create a folder in which you want to store your project and I'm going to create a folder here. I'll just call it LCD basic because this is the first and the most basic LCD application. Um, and I'll call the project LCD basic as well. Type it over here and then I click save. And um, this from my other project so after you save it it brings you to this page where you have to select the device you're using and remember the device we're using for this tutorial is the um the Tiva C TM4C which is from Texas Instruments you can scroll down here and come here and go all the way down there to look for it but I happen to know a bit of the name, so I could just type here TM4C1230H. This is the one we're looking for. This is the one for the Tiva C board. Also, if you have the old type of Tiva C boards, which are the LM4F, they would also work. So, this is the one I have, and I hope this is the one you have. You click it, and then OK. And then this one brings us to the runtime environment manager and over here we have to select some startup files we need for our project and we don't need much all we need is the cmsys core remember we are writing cmsys compliance code here so that the code we write here with just minor alterations will be easily able to write it for microcontrollers from other vendors so that's the beauty of CMSYS. I think everyone should learn to program in CMSYS. It makes things really easy. Um, so we need a CMSYS core under CMSYS and under device, we need a startup. Yeah, so we check this as well. And then we click OK. Now everything is set. All we have to do is um, create um, our target options and the board we use in has a frequency of 16 megahertz so we change this number 12 to 16 and we come here under debug tab we choose the Stellaris ICDI this one here click OK and now we are up and running now all we have to do is create a file and type out our code and we can come here new file the file is created to make um to format it as a C file, you have to save it as .c. So let's just save it first. I press Control plus S to save the file, and then I name it main .c. So one thing, as you've saved the file, the file is not part of your project yet. Right now, it only exists on the drive. In order to make it a part of your project, you have to come and expand here. Double click on source group and then this is your project folder now it's displaying just .c files in order to see your file okay it's already here you double click main.c and then close now if you come to source group if you expand source group you should see your file it's over here so now when we write our code it would format with a particular c colors for us um, so the first thing we have to do in our main file, which is our only file, is to include the CMSYS header file so that as we type out, everything would work and we wouldn't receive any errors for writing CMSYS code. And we do that by right clicking, then go into insert include file and the file we're looking for is the tm4c123.h file. That's the device header. So now that that is included, let's get typing. So first, every program has a main function, every embedded program basically. Uh, int main, we create our main function, simple as this. And in our function, from our flowchart, we set the first thing we do 
the first thing we do when the program starts is to initialize the LCD. So we're going to create a function here known as LCD init. And then so instead of typing out everything here, let's go and define the function and then continue. So for the LCD init function, as we can see from our flowchart or as we spoke about in the um the previous lessons, it initializes the GPIO port as well as creates the basic initialization for our LCD to start. So um let's create a it's a void function LCD init. It takes one argument. Uh, it takes no argument. Sorry, that's not a command. And basically, all we need is let's start with a GPIO initialization. And the first thing we need is system control the RCGC GPIO. And then what we want to do is enable the clock for port A, which is 0, 01 here, like this. And then after we've enabled the clock for port A, we have to also enable the clock for port B. Remember, um, the control pins of the LCD are connected to port A, while the data pins D0 through D7 are connected to port B to the precise B0 through B7 RC, GC, GPIO and port B is just that's a shorthand way of writing these two lines together which I'll show you later I just want to break everything down for you this being the basic LCD program and now that we've initialized or now that we've turned on the clock for the port we're going to use let's tell the microcontroller what input pins we want and what output pins we want then we enable such pins so we start with GPIOA and with GPIOA go to the direction register remember the direction register is the register that tells the microcontroller whether to set a particular pin to input or output so all we need here is 0, 0x, e0 and basically what this means in binary. I always do this to help my students. I put a binary version here. It's easier to visualize. The first E gives us uh, the first E gives us one 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 zero and the last zero gives us one two three four. Remember one hexadecimal digit makes four binary digits. So basically as you can see this is um this is P uh this PA0, PA1, PA2, PA3, PA4, PA5, PA6, PA7. Remember we connected the um the RS, the E and RW pins to PA5, PA6, and PA7. That is why they are enabled over here. So I'll just don't forget the semicolon here. Yeah. I'll just put it here for your reference. Um I'll put a comment here, put A controls. And these controls, I mean R S E R W, and this based on the connection that we've made, the physical connection we've made between our microcontroller and our LCD, and we spoke about this in the previous lesson. Now that we've told the microcontroller to set these pins as output pins, um, let's go ahead and enable them. And to enable pins, what we need is the GPIO digital enable register uh, and it's DEN and we want to enable the same pins that we've spoken about and all we need here is 0x just like we did E0 now these pins are enabled so the next GPIO port we have to deal with is port B where the data pins are connected and we are using all the port B pins so come here GPIO B PIR set it all to output 0x ff and basically what this means to visualize binary it's 
it's 111 111 and this means um this is b0 b1 b2 b3 b4 b5 b6 b7 just like we connected it if you expand these this is what you get so now let's enable this port b pins um g p i o b d e n which stands for digital enable and the same code ff sorry now we are all set for our gpio enabling the next thing we have to do will be to send commands to the lcd to set the um the first time initialization these commands as we spoke of we tell the the microcontroller what type of lcd we're using and in what operation mode we want to use so um let's start here we would have to create another function known as lcd cmd which stands for lcd command in order to send the commands so instead of writing this function that does not exist and receive quite a lot of red lines indicating errors i suggest we come down here and type out the content of the function before we use it up here this function lcd command um, this is a void function lcd cmd it takes one argument and this argument is an unsigned character argument which will uh, which will give the name command this is the name of the local variable and basically over here as we said in order to write commands to the LCD you have to set the RS pin to zero so that the internal LCD registers will select the command register and then we we'll write our command send a pulse through pin E and then we delay a bit so that's what we'll do here basically so all we need is GPIOA data 0x 0x00 and what this means is RS equals 0 RW equals 0 and E equals 0 um, remember GPIO is where our LCD uh, remember GPIO A is where the LCD control pins are connected um, they are connected to A5, A6, A7 and in order to change um, to turn these pins on and off to manipulate them we have to use the data register which I hope you are already familiar with let's continue so now we've selected um, the command register inside the LCD what we have to do now is write our command and we do this by writing to the same data register GPIOA data and then we assign our local variable to it it's called command so whatever we put in bracket will be written to the data register here so after we write to the data register we send a pulse and we do this by GPIOA data equals 0 x80 and basically what this performs or what it does is it keeps everything the same way in the GPIO control registers and then it enables E what it does is it sets E here E to 1 to secure the command I'll just put this comment here for you so after that what we want is to be uh, is to delay a bit remember we said in order to pause it we have to de delay a brief moment um, we've not created our delay functions let's delay here delay micro we'll create this function that does not exist right now delay micro zero um, so um, just like we did up here let's go down and define this function so that we don't get the red lines really don't like those red lines let's define the function and then come here and then go back up there to complete these two functions so currently the function preventing us from moving forward is the delay function 